bring the herbs of my bloodline from my grandmother to her great grandmother and her great great grandmother and her great great grandmother do I bring the womb work of my bloodline as I am a midwife and a root worker Powerful when we are able to tap into it and to know that when we see things or hear certain things it's not just a, always a random thought you know we are hearing and seeing things for a reason and so it was really during that time that I began to be more clear about my my gift in being a medium and being able to communicate with the ancestors and knowing that they have always communicated with me, even from the time that I was very young, and they have guided me, you know, and when I listen to them, then I have very good results. So um, when it comes to the healing, I actually, Take some, take something, and, and toss it down at the back porch, just to keep the, just to keep the bad energy away from the back there. But they would never discuss those things. They would never speak about those things in any kind of terms of what it really was, and definitely not in African tradition because that was considered evil and that was something from the devil. But all the traditions still survived. So they would say, "Oh yeah, you know, we did it. We did this because mommy taught us. We did this because mommy taught us." And they would take things and they would toss it out. And they would talk about these words. They would say things about, oh, this this wanga, just just, and they would say these words. And I and I would hear the word, and I would never connect it. I didn't understand what it meant at the time. And much later, and again coming back to my tradition, learning, coming to find out that wanga is part of our tradition again. Wanga is when you take the roots, you take the herbs, you take the roots, the sticks, you cast them out, you cast them, you change the energy of your environment based on the things that you have around you. So the things that our um, enslaved ancestors would use were things that came from this area, from this region. So they didn't look anything like the things that our ancestors from the continent would use, but, they, but the tradition itself, the movement, the intention and the actions were exactly the same. They would find the ways. And I can still remember movements of them going and taking things and tossing it out. And then to come all the way to here, to come to be part of this reality where my ancestors guided me to, and then to come to find out that wanga is actually an Ovambo word. So without even knowing, without even realizing that they were still penetrating the Christian tradition that had been imposed on them, my family was still using words, still using movements, actions, and words that were directly descended and given to them by the Ovambo people, because the word wanga is a, is a that's an Ovambo word. That's a word of us. And so these these same things are buried. They're they're inside of our DNA. They can't go anywhere. They can't be. They can be overlaid with all sorts of other traditions. But there's no way for what is really alive inside of us, for what is really divine inside of us, to disappear. There's no way. No matter which form of divination that I'm doing, I will always have the snake and I'll always have the water. So either I'll come with my actual snake or I'll use the snake skin from my snake. And that will be present when I'm doing divination. I'll also have water. One of my easiest forms of divination is to look through the water. So I may sit and look through a clear bowl or a clear glass of water to do my divination, or I might submerge myself in water. Now, of course, I don't do this necessarily uh, right there with my clients, but before I do a ceremony, before I do divination for people, 
are when I'm getting messages from my own ancestors. I'll submerge myself in water, and I do this pretty much every day. Uh, I'll spend at least three hours of my day in water. And when I come out, I come out with lots of answers. I come out with lots of clarity. But my people are water people. My mother and my grandmother transferred this tradition to me. We spend lots of time in water. A uh, lot of the ceremonies that were performed on me as a child had to do with water. The cleansing rituals, you know, the way that we uh, divined uh, the dreams, everything was surrounding water. So this was directly passed to me uh, from my mother, from my grandmother, and then her mother, and so on. Khan term, undu, meaning medicine from roots, trees, plant life. It also means to become heavy with the spirit, to bring the spirits down through spirit possession and spirit communication. So we engage the oracular divination process to communicate with the nananom and samanpo, our spiritually cultivated ancestresses and ancestors of our direct blood servants, and to communicate with the abosom, the forces in nature, the deities, the divinities, who incarnate with us, those who incarnate with us through our matriclans and patriclans. So we utilize Udu in the capacity of root work to wage chemical and biological warfare against our enemies, the whites and their offspring, to force the end of enslavement in the Western Hemisphere. And we have that precedent that we established centuries ago to build upon today, utilizing our ancestral religious practices the agency of oracular divination to wage chemical and biological warfare against our enemies. <laughs> 